One of my favorite book series is The Wheel of Time, which is set for an adaptation in Netflix to become a TV show. And because it's the 21st century, everything needs a stupid controversy, this one being the fact that there is some race swapping, kind of, in, in some of the main characters of all the, the, the kids from Two Rivers are not white. So I wanted to give my opinion and, center, and sort of outline the sort of, I think, a rational conservative opinion on race swapping, gender swapping, sexuality swapping from um, uh, original works into adapted material. So if, if you look at the, the, the people there, I mean, it, it makes sense that if you want everyone from a village, it, it would make sense if they're an insular village, you wouldn't have uh, people who are like dark skin Idris Eba versus like pale white me. Right, if it's a because it's a small isolated village you're starting out from, but I actually kind of like what they've done here. Um, it's 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 like dark skinned white people, you know, light skinned uh, black people, and racially ambiguous people, and that makes a lot of sense for uh, the races of the two rivers. So I think the controversy is a bit silly, and for race swapping controversies and all type of controversy, I think there's a really great rule, and Larry Elder outlined it. It's called his. Elvis rule, which I think is one of the best ways to look at life. And it's about like 7 to 10% of Americans and probably people worldwide think Elvis is still alive, right? It's some sort of conspiracy. So when there's lots of noise over something silly, like, you know, your favorite character was Asian, but now they're white or was uh, white and now they're Asian. Just remember, if you hear noise, 7% of the, the population at best thinks Elvis is still alive. So People are just crazy. There's another baseline where you can look at it. And are people not sort of racist in what they're doing? Are they just so afraid of ruining an adapted material? They, they, they love a thing. And the best example of this is there was a controversy when Daniel Craig became the first James Bond that there was going to be a blonde James Bond, right? So, the, you know, the people who are mad about a brown-haired person becoming blonde hair, is this racism or just they, they, they really are attached to, 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 to their image of the property? So now I think we've gotten over that. Like, I think there, there's, there's things you can and can't change about characters. Like, I don't think James Bond's race is, makes is that important. He could be played by Idris, Eba, or Idris, Elba, uh, Idris Elba because he's British, right? But you wouldn't want to see him played by Chris Hemsworth who is American, right? Because James Bond is British. That's why it doesn't... I'd rather a Idris Elba, because he's British spy, versus, like, an American. Or is Chris Hemsworth Australian or something? Who knows? Anyways, he should be British. That's what I'm saying. So when we get to the Wheel of Time, does does the race of the characters matter that much? And I actually say no, not really, because race isn't that important of a theme in the Wheel of Time. You have... You know, it's sort of spoiler, but minor, minor spoiler. It doesn't spoil anything. It's set like after our world has expired, a couple ages past this modern world. So it, it makes sense that people would have been thrown around and mixed a different race. What is important, though, in the Wheel of Time is culture, right? So the cultures have to be good, right? So, right, Nynaeve is played by a, a, a black woman, which doesn't matter, but culture matters. Like, you can't have her in an afro. Nynaeve needs to have a braid. Because half of Naive's character is tugging a braid. So as long as she can braid her hair, which I'm sure she will, then then everything is fine there. Now, there's certain things that people can and cannot swap within the Wheel of Time. I'm fine with them swapping different races. Like I, It's good that they keep the, the Borderlanders Asian, um, but there's very, very few characters that sort of need to have like a, a race in the Wheel of Time. The only one I can really think of is, is Landfair who really, really should be white because all of her... So this part of, part of her character is like being an all-white and she's contrasted by Simraj, which is all black. Uh, so, you know, those two should probably remain the same. The rest, it, it doesn't really matter. Now, I mean, the reason why people sort of get concerned about Hollywood doing this is is sometimes, you know, bad, sort of untactfully done, you know, race swapping can... Sus- can ruin the suspended disbelief, which fantasy series really rely on. So Two Rivers, where the story starts out, is a very isolated village. Like, it's protected by rivers and mountains, so it's very, very isolated. That way, it would kind of ruin the sort of suspension of disbelief if there was such a multi-ethnic, like, people stark black and, 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 and very white there in a small village. Because people would think about it like, wait, no, if they were isolated for thousands of years, wouldn't they all sort of interbreed into something more racially mixed brownish? Which is what they kind of are now. So I think... They've done it right then. And then when they get out into the wider world, when you get to the big cities like Camlin and, and Tarvalon, it doesn't matter what races, or sorry, what, yeah, what races or colors people are. Now, there are certain things where, you know, race swapping 
can sort of ruin a story. And I'll, I'll get back to that. Uh, my best example is they're talking about making Magneto black. And that's a really bad idea. And it's not because, oh, you can't have blacks or, you know, I'm Jewish and they're taking away a, a character. Like that sort of ruins Magneto's character to not make him Jewish because Magneto's entire motivation to make his character make sense, to make his villain make sense, he has to be Jewish and a Holocaust survivor. Because Magneto is trying to take over the world um, and destroy the human race. But you can have some sympathy and you understand him. And, and good villains are ones you understand their motives because he came from hell. He came from Auschwitz. He saw a situation where, you know, he, the human race tried to exterminate his people. And he says, take can never get to the extreme and say, no, no, I'm going to be the aggressor now. And he has the power to be so. So that makes Magneto's character. If you were to make him black, it, it throws out of whack the motivation, right? You know, if you were to make him black and, and sort of 40 right now, and he's like, okay, racism exists, therefore I want to kill everyone, right? The motivations are out of whack again, right? And it, it kind of ruins him. And, and this kind of goes back to what X-Men originally was. I mean, we all know X-Men was an allegory for racism in the 60s. And, you know, Magneto was a loose allegory for the Malcolm X point of view, and Professor X was MLK. This is sort of how X-Men goes. So if you were to, were to sort of make him black, then it ruins the the allegory, which was sort of teaching people about civil rights in, in the first place. So he, here's here's just where little things can do that. And so there are things where you just want to sort of avoid the suspension of disbelief. Again, if, if Matt's character in The Wheel of Time is going to be as white as I am, you can't have his father be Idris Elba. Like, he, because then people just go, what's going on? It takes people out of the story, which you don't rely on. Now, going back to The Wheel of Time, you can't really swap genders of of moderate to main characters because gender is a really important theme and especially in the wheel of time the whole plot sort of uh is on the fact that um there's one or two major magic systems a male half and a female half and the male half thousands of years was tainted and anyone who t any magic user who's male will go insane and, and sort of destroying the place um so that, so all the sort of top positions of power of sort of over the thousand years become female because they they can sort of channel or use magic uh, safely. So this sets up a whole sort of gender dynamic in this society where women sort of have the power in sort of a medieval um, pseudo-magical society. So to sort of, you know, make kings queens or queens kings or, or certain characters, main characters, male to female, it would really, really ruin um, a lot of the, you know, the, the fundamental Wheel of Time ethos. So I think people, this is kind of what 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 most people are uh, agree on left and right now there is a sort of social justice aspect that gets to sort of when you see race and gender swapping and sexuality swapping it sort of puts your your ears up for like oh are they just going to do some sort of um social justice politics here which which no one likes because the wheel of time doesn't isn't it has some left wing and some right wing robert jordan's pretty libertarian quasi-centrist in in a lot of his viewings we can go into that in, in, later but one of the best examples of sort of like the point that people make of like, we don't want to see people go off the adaptation. This is a bad sign. It's like Game of Thrones. First five seasons off in the books. Fantastic. After that, I mean, season eight was an act of domestic terrorism at best. And my best example for like thinking back of to, okay, sort of social justice -y things. And this is a sort of sexuality swapping. Asha or Yara in the show, Theon's sister, the Greyjoy chick. In the books, she's a great character, just a great character, and she's badass, and she, and men will follow her, and she's earned her keep, and she's competent and qualified and a great leader, but she's also a woman, a heterosexual woman, and she has female urges, like everyone in Game of Thrones does. But then in the show, to sort of add some social justice -y stuff, right, there's a scene where she just, like, accosts a barmaid and, like, yeah, just slaps her on the ass, and, like, to be one of the boys, she had to be a lesbian, right? And, and you can say like this is sort of where the social justice contradicts with the standard left-wing thought because yay lesbians exist okay no one cares i mean they had dorn to, to go off on that but there's another problem of saying okay women can't be respected can't be badass unless they're sort of embodying the traits of masculinity and like one of those is lesbianism is masculinity like it, it's it's one of those weird social social justice things that that doesn't really make sense when you think about it and that's that's kind of what i think most people fear out of social justice politics coming into the wheel of time because it's a great story and if you start to add in sort of the politics of intersectional feminists in 2020 you're going to ruin the overall quality of the story which is what everyone wants so you know race swapping 
once you get outside the two rivers, it doesn't really matter what race people are because culture is way more important than the Wheel of Time. Uh, genders of, of specific characters really do matter. Um, that 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 there's very very little leeway to come in. You can invent new characters, or but you kind of have to stay true to that theme because of what I've described. That's how the society is set up. That's the whole story is sort of based off this. Um, sexuality, you know, I don't care if they add in more gay characters. I mean. All, all, everything Robert Jordan wrote to, everything's alluded to, and they can, listen, I'd be good if they changed some of the romances, because all, like, it's a great book, it's a great book series, but the romances in there are like, well, he saw her, and she saw him, and now they're in love forever, and, and they're like, and, and Elaine, like, I love Rand, I lo-, like, you know, if Elaine and Avienda end up really being, you know, bisexual and having a lesbian relationship, I don't care, I don't care, I actually think it makes the, their characters better, it makes a lot of the story makes more sense, I don't think they are in the books, it's like people think they're, I don't think they are, but if they make him that way in the show, I actually think their relationship makes a lot more sense. And, it, you know, I'd be good if we can show a romance happening on screen. Like there's like Nynaeve and Lan- like yeah, the romances in, in Wheel of Time, there's like three that are okay at best. And I think one of them was even written by Brandon Sanderson. So, you know, sexuality, you can add in gay characters, you can add in lesbian characters, they exist in, in the world. Um... The, what people don't want to see, though, is what people get, get get also the other fear that I think everyone has. And I think even Brandon Simmons said said this is when you try and like make a character a female or gay or, or add in one of these one of these things, writers, even with the best intentions, can get kind of scared to sort of portray women, gays, black people in a negative light. And part of this what turns these characters into Captain Marvel. The problem with Captain Marvel wasn't Brie Larson going on to social justice politics. Like, there wasn't social justice a lot in the movie. You know, that was Brie Larson outside of it. But the problem with the movie was Captain Marvel had no flaws. Like, C- Captain Marvel, there was there was no cracks in her. There was no, like, you know, we say the Mary Sue a lot. But that was the problem with Captain Marvel is she was too strong a character that it made her uninteresting. Right? There was no flaws. There was no indecision. She never made bad choices and had to pay the con- uh, consequences for it. Then train harder, persevere, and overcome her failures. There was there was none of that. Like all all the failures were external. Nothing was her fault. And this is another problem or, or another fear people have with these sort of race swapping, gender swapping, sexuality swapping is when you do this to characters, will the writers then become too afraid to make these characters human with flaws? Because these make people like ki- people like flawed characters better they like characters they can identify with because no one's perfect and if if you have a great writer they can write strong female characters but those characters aren't perfect and that's what makes them stronger and part of part of their strength can be overcoming their weaknesses learning to get better so that's my views on sort of sexuality racial swapping one i thought to sum it up i don't think the controversy was as big as someone people put it out to be um yes there's people upset but again 7% 7% of people, 10% of people think Elvis is still alive. So, you know, if those people are mad about the, the color of the, the people in the TV show, I, I don't think we, we, we need to worry about those people in society. Uh, two, for this specific um, show, races don't really matter. Like, out, once you get outside the two rivers, the, you know, you just, and there's not stark contrast. And um, three, I think people's fears are not so much of they don't want to see a woman, they don't want to see this. It's they don't want to see something they love um, adapted poorly and inserted with sort of modern intersectional politics, which no one likes. No one likes. Left and right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say to my left-wing friends that I've spo- I speak to them, and when you talk to people on the left, they're not as crazy as the TA I had in sociology. Like, they're nowhere near this crazy. People are very reasonable when we talk to them. And people's concerns are, are mostly sort of, and they see them in Game of Thrones. Once you get off the books, once you go into what Red is the land, once they try to, I mean, Dorne. What a, they, Dorne was such a great place of, you know, feminism where female inheritance laws and there's all these complicated things in Dorne of, of women inheriting it was great but then they got to the show and it was just gay slutty Mexico right right you even saw it on the map they did didn't it like in the, they didn't even do star falls a cap, uh, capital they just said Dorne here you know whatever it's all the same place it's just gay slutty Mexico and people want to see Dorne which has female empowerment they don't want gay slutty Mexico I think it's a good place to leave it. So next non-political rant, although it was a bit political, will be every Saturday because I need to keep myself sane in the times of quarantine.